Spy versus VTI. Now in this video, I'm going to be comparing these two awesome ETFs. I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know, including things like expense ratio, dividend yield, the shares they are holding. So if you are interested in investing in either SPY or VTI, you want to know the differences and which one is better, keep watching as this will be the most valuable video you have ever watched. Okay, so we can see right here that straight away, SPY is trading about double the price of VTI. This doesn't really matter too much though, the individual price, because it does depend on how many shares are out there. Now, SPY is issued by State Street Global and VTI is obviously issued by Vanguard as it is in the name. Now, something pretty big right here straight away that pops out is that owning SPY is pretty much triple the price of owning VTI. Now, if you don't know already, the expense ratio right here is effectively the yearly cost for owning this ETF. So 0.09 effectively means that you are going to pay 0.09% of your total stock amount in fees every single year. So if you hold a thousand dollars worth of shares, they will take away from you 0.01% of that as almost like a management fee. Now looking at the assets under management, SPY do have a lot more assets right here, which means there is more people invested in SPY. <laughs> and then just looking at this guys, the average daily volume, wow, that is a, a crazy, crazy difference right here. Over 36 times the average daily volume on SPY than there is on VTI. And something to take into consideration is the fact that SPY is probably the most traded ETF that is out there. It's pretty hard to beat SPY in terms of average volume. And the only thing that this could really mean is there is going to be a lot more buying and exit liquidity for SPY. But with almost a billion dollar daily volume, I don't really think this is something to worry about as this is still a pretty big ETF. We then go down to the underlying index right here and you can see that SPY is going to track the S&P 500 and VTI is going to track the CRSP total market. So that is a huge difference between the two. And this is the second major part and this is the second major difference apart from the expense ratio is going to be the fact that SPY is tracking the top 500 S&P stocks and VTI is tracking the entire CRSP market. It shows underneath right here, we have 501 total holdings for SPY and 4,000 total holdings for VTI. Now, complete personal preference, I personally prefer investing in just the top 500 market cap stocks. I don't think there's anything wrong with investing in total market ETFs. I just prefer putting my money into the big boys, the top 500 market cap, and leaving the smaller cap stocks alone. So once again, we go into the costs. We've spoken about the expense ratio. Now the spread, you can see right here why SPY is traded so much because there is no spread whatsoever really. And another fairly big difference here is the median tracking difference. Now the median tracking difference effectively means how far off is the index fund from the actual asset it is tracking. So you can see right here, SPY is so SPY is tracking the S&P 500. So this means that in the past 12 months, SPY has returned 0.13% less than the S&P, whereas VTI is only 0.02% away. So VTI is slightly more accurate. Nothing really to worry about there. That's just a 0.1% difference. But I suppose that 0.1% can add up over the years. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, right here, we can see the average per performance over the past certain timeframes. So in the past 10 years, we have seen an average of 13.5% per year for SPY and an average of 13.2% per year for VTI. Going slightly down over the past five years, we have seen some slightly worse returns at 11% per year. In the past three years, it's averaged 12% per year for SPY and VTI coming in slightly worse at 11.51. In the past year, we can see that SPY is down 6% and VTI is down considerably more at minus 10% in the past year. Um, year to date, pretty similar right here with averaging around about minus 18% and then we are continuing to fall. Now, if we go down to the number of holdings right here, we can see that although SPY is tracking the top 500 stocks and Vanguard is tracking the entire market, the top holdings are basically going to be identical. And the reason for this is because the top market cap stocks are the same for the top 500 and the entire market. 
Now the only difference here, and I'm not entirely sure why this is, but for some reason VTI are holding slightly more Tesla than Alphabet, and if you guys don't know, Alphabet is the parent company of Google. So VTI are holding slightly more Tesla than Alphabet, and Spy are holding slightly more Alphabet than Tesla. Once again, I'm not entirely sure why, but that is a little bit strange. Something else to point out is the fact that SPY are holding slightly more of a percentage of the portfolio in these top 10 stocks than VTI is, but this is to be expected as there is only 500 stocks in here and the funds need to be spread out over 4,000 in VTI. Now, if we go ahead and look at the fund overlap and we just go for SPY and VTI and find overlap. We can see that we have an 84% similarity between these two ETFs and pretty similar right here. As I said guys, the only difference is going to be, uh, do you want some of your money being put into the lower cap stocks or do you want everything to be in the top 500? There is one more very important thing that I would like to show you and this may influence your decision a little bit and this is the portfolio backtest. So we are going to start out in the year 1992 and we are going to look at the average return over the past 30 years for both of these ETFs to see which one would have been better to hold. So what we are going to do is we are going to start with a $10,000 initial account size. We are going to be reinvesting dividends. So what we are going to do right here is go for SPY and also VTI. Now this one is going to be 100%, portfolio 2, 100%. 100% for VTI and let's take a look at which one would have been most profitable. So if we go down here, we can see that holding SPY, you would actually have got slightly less money than if you had held the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. With SPY, you would have turned $10,000 into $53,192, but with the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, you would have turned $10,000 into $56,756. You can also see that Vanguard is slightly more volatile with a slightly better year and also a slightly worse year. And there is one thing that this doesn't take into consideration and this is a pretty important thing actually and that is going to be the expense ratio and cost of holding these funds. So on top of already being more profitable than SPY, VTI would also be three times as cheap, which increases the profitability even more over SPY. So even though I said at the start of the video, I personally prefer investing in the top 500 stocks, given the evidence that we have seen in this video when we have analyzed both of these stocks, from the data shown over the past 30 years, it would have undoubtedly been a better idea to be holding VTI. Honestly, I did not expect this, but it is quite refreshing to know this and maybe I will be changing up my investment strategy after looking at this data. Now, please keep in mind that nothing in this video was financial advice. This was all my opinions only. And before making any financial or investing decision, you should consult a professionally trained financial advisor as this video was made for entertainment purposes only. With that being said, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to smash that like button and tap that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, take it easy.